Welcome to Revolutionary Secrets. In this episode, we're looking at the code systems used by the Americans in the Revolutionary War. In this part, we'll learn the story of Benedict Arnold and the coded messages he used, not to share information with the Americans, but rather with the British. In the summer of 1778, General George Washington gave General Benedict Arnold command of Philadelphia after the British evacuated. There, Arnold met and eventually married a young British loyalist named Peggy Shippen. Through her friend John Andre, the adjunct general in the British Army and chief of its intelligence service, Arnold began a secret correspondence with British General Sir Henry Clinton. Arnold communicated with the British using several cryptologic methods, including codes. One of his methods was the use of a book code, which is different from a code book. As I told you in the first part of this episode, a code list or code book is a compilation of words and their associated code. A book code uses any published book as its source. Arnold used Blackstone's Commentaries on the Laws of England. Although the actual process varies, Arnold used a standard encoding procedure using a three-number code group to replace a word. The numbers represent the page, line, and word count on that line. 110, 5, 6 indicates page 110 on the fifth line down, the sixth word in. So 110, 5, 6 is the word settlement. Decoding is not difficult if you have the same book. Encoding is much harder. Finding the word you want to encode in the pages of the book can be very time-consuming, if it's even possible. Blackstone's law book contained few of the words Arnold needed to relay military information, and much of his message was tediously ciphered. To make encoding easier, Arnold began using a dictionary as his book code. As we mentioned in Part 1 of this episode, the American diplomats were using dictionary codes as well. They're easy to use since all the words are in alphabetical order. The questions become which dictionary is used and what method is used to identify the word. Nathan Bailey's English dictionary was quite popular at the time, and it became Arnold's source. He used a standard encoding method, page, column, word count, to indicate the selected word. The word transfer was on page 210 in the first column, the 24th word down. It would be shown as 210-124. Using the dictionary code, Benedict Arnold wrote a coded message to Major John Andre proposing the sale of West Point. At this time, West Point was not a military academy. It was an important fortification on the banks of the Hudson River, valuable not only for its strategic location, but also for its supplies. Arnold knew West Point would be a significant asset to the British. If he had command of the garrison, he could turn it over to the British for a price. In this coded message, he proposes... If I point out a plan of cooperation by which Sir Henry shall possess himself of West Point, the garrison, etc., 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 £20,000 sterling, I think, will be a cheap purchase for an object of so much importance. £20,000 sterling would be more than $3 million today. He then expresses the need for a personal meeting with someone to work out the details. To make the arrangements for the sale and capture of West Point, General Clinton sent John Andre to meet with Benedict Arnold. The two had long been connected through the secret correspondence chain. Andre came over on the HMS Vulture on the Hudson River, under the cloak of darkness. Though no one knows exactly what was discussed, they spoke until almost dawn on September 22, 1780. Arnold also passed papers concerning West Point's fortifications and other details to Andre, insisting that he hide them in his stockings. With the day about to break, Andre was forced to stay ashore, and Arnold led him back to a sympathizer's house behind American lines. To return to the British, Arnold suggested Andre dress as a civilian. Major Andre initially refused. To be caught behind American lines posing as a civilian would prove he was a spy and guarantee him a spy's death. But he had little choice. The following day, Benedict Arnold's friend led Andre back toward White Plains, New York, but turned back a few miles before reaching White Plains. They were past the usual patrol lines, and neither one expected any trouble the rest of the way. However, Three volunteer militiamen stopped Andre outside of Terrytown. Initially, Andre believed the men were British, and he, his comments to them instantly made the men suspicious of him. The men searched him and found the papers hidden in his boot. They took Andre to Colonel Jameson at the post at North Castle, New York. John Andre claimed to be Mr. John Anderson, and Colonel Jameson wasn't sure what to do with him. He decided to send Mr. Anderson to his commanding officer, Benedict Arnold. He sent the confiscated papers to George Washington. Later that day, Benjamin Talmadge arrived at North Castle and learned of the prisoner and his papers. 
he became suspicious. Even if Mr. Anderson stole the papers without Benedict Arnold's knowledge, it was apparent that Arnold met with the spy for some reason. If not incriminating, it was highly suspicious. Talmadge urged Jameson to recall the soldiers escorting Anderson and return the prisoner. Jameson did, but he insisted on sending Arnold a letter concerning the incident. The captured documents continued on to George Washington. When Andre learned that the documents were being taken to General Washington, he knew he was lost. He confessed to being Major John Andre, Sir Henry Clinton's adjunct general. This proved Benedict Arnold's involvement and guilt. But Talmadge knew Jameson's report would reach Arnold before anyone could call it back. Indeed, when Arnold learned of Andre's capture, he was left as quickly as possible. George Washington arrived at West Point, where the captured documents and Andre's confession finally reached him. Washington must have been stunned to learn that his brave, trusted, and tactically brilliant general was, in fact, a traitor. He didn't hesitate long, however, and quickly sent Alexander Hamilton to catch up with Arnold, but Arnold was already safely aboard the HMS Vulture. Benedict Arnold spent the rest of the war fighting on the side of the British. John Andre was hanged as a spy. The sale of West Point never went through, and it stayed in Patriot hands. It was the capture of Andre that alerted the Americans to Arnold's traitorous actions, not the capture of Arnold's coded message. Washington and his codebreaker James Lovell never saw the letter. If they had, it's possible they could have decoded it. Arnold's method of encoding with a three-number group, page column count, would have indicated a dictionary code. In the, if the middle number is always either one or two, it is a dictionary code. Arnold may have tried to disguise this because he added seven to the column numbers, but that only changed them to either eight or nine, still indicative of a, of a dictionary code. And since Nathan Bailey's dictionary was one of the most popular dictionaries of the time, it seems plausible that, that the Americans could have solved Arnold's message if only they'd seen it. I hope you enjoyed our look at codes used by the American spies, diplomats, and traitors in the Revolutionary War. In our last episode, we're going to finally answer that question, what is that hourglass message on the title page? It's, we'll be talking about steganography, or hidden messages. I hope you'll join me.